Blood means many things to people. It has had cultural and religious implications since before the beginning of recorded history. Blood is identity. Bloodlines and lineage form the basis of who you are. Therefore, the advent of blood transfusions affected not only the medical world, but the culture as a whole. Blood has always equated life. It is vital to survival. The ability to restore lost blood flow to a damaged body had major effects on surgery, war victims, and victims of violent attack or childbirth. Furthermore, blood transfusions led to in-depth experimentation with blood in the hopes of making the process easier and more successful. This experimentation led to the discovery of blood types, bloodborne disease, treatment for shock, and organ transplant. The scientific innovation of blood transfusion changed not only medical procedures, but also had positive and negative impacts on society and culture around the world. The circulation system within the human body is simple and ingenious. The heart pumps blood out through the arteries to bring oxygen and nutrients to organs and to remove waste. Then it is cleaned in the liver and kidneys and returned to the heart through the veins. This system was discovered by William Harvey and presented in his book on the motions of the heart and blood in 1628. Blood is composed of three types of cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets floating in a watery liquid called plasma. Red blood cells use a molecule called hemoglobin to carry oxygen from the lungs to the other organs. White blood cells fight infection, and platelets clot the blood. Everything known today about blood was discovered by hard-working scientists striving to uncover the mysteries of the human body in order to change lives. In February 1665, Richard Lower performed a revolutionary experiment. He used goose quills, a dog's bladder, and a metal tube to convey blood from one dog's artery to another dog's vein. This was the first recorded attempt at blood transfusion. Soon after, a Frenchman named Jean-Baptiste Denis used his techniques to perform the first transfusion of animal blood to humans. Then, in 1668, a man died after transfusion by Denis, and the experiments with blood transfusions faded away. There wasn't any real interest in transfusions until the 19th century. In 1818, a physiologist named James Blundell performed the first transfusion of blood in humans. He used a technique involving a syringe that he had perfected on dogs. However, Blundell performed his transfusions on critically ill patients, so it is impossible to tell which of the recipients died from the transfusion and which died from their illness. Whether or not the transfusions killed the patients, a significant innovation in medical science had been made. This was the beginning of a new procedure that both saved and ruined lives and changed the course of history. Despite the fatal illnesses of some of Blundell's patients, there are other factors to be considered in the deaths of about half of the transfusion recipients. Some people have blood that is not compatible with other people's. In 1901, an immunologist named Carl Leinstener presented his experimental findings to the medical world. He had isolated three different blood types, A, B, and O. He maintained that these blood types were mutually incompatible and that this was why coagulation, or clotting, of the blood sometimes took place directly after a transfusion. Later, another factor, AB, was discovered, followed by the discovery of the rhesus, or RH factor. When the RH incompatibility existed between mother and child, the mother's antibodies would attack those of the fetus, resulting in brain damage and jaundice. The discovery of this factor and the innovation of blood transfusions meant that the child could be saved. However useful blood transfusions were as a treatment for a myriad of conditions, it was hard to keep up the blood supply. In 1937, physician Bernard Fantis established the first live donor blood bank in Chicago. After donation, blood could only be kept for about a week, even in refrigeration. In 1939, a doctor named John Elliott discovered a method to separate and preserve the blood plasma. This could be kept for 10 years after separation, making it much easier to receive a blood transfusion. In addition, it was discovered by Dr. Charles Drew that the plasma could be dried and sent to the Battlefield Mobile Blood Banks with enough water to rehydrate it for use. World War II saw changes in medical technique. This was the first use of wide-scale blood transfusion to save soldiers and civilians wounded in combat and during bombings. People all over the free world stepped up to help out, and by 1940, over 6,000 people in the New York City area alone had donated blood to save the British plagued by the consistent air strikes by German bombers. There is no way to know how many people were saved by this simple medical innovation, but an extreme loss of blood no longer meant certain death. As stated in the New York Times on October 6, 1940, the Red Cross, the Blood Transfusion Betterment Association, the hospitals, doctors, nurses, and technicians are all voluntarily donating their services and facilities to make available this new aid that has never before been possible to the victims of war. 
This new service has been made possible through the recent finding of a new means for preparing blood that eliminates the necessity for blood typing. In 1942, biochemist Edwin Cohn discovered a way to separate different proteins from the plasma, such as serum albumin. A transfusion of serum albumin is a treatment for shock that does not require blood typing or a transfusion of whole blood. By the end of the war, more than 2 million units of albumin were produced. Blood transfusions have an impact on the lives of people suffering from many conditions involving blood, such as war victims, victims of car accidents or violent crime, hemophilia, postpartum bleeding, von Willebrand disease, hemorrhages, and sickle cell anemia. Hemophilia, in particular, is a genetic disorder that requires frequent blood transfusions to counteract uncontrollable bleeding and lack of clotting factors. Cohn's innovation in 1942 meant that specific clotting factors in blood could be isolated and injected into hemophiliacs to reduce their symptoms. Because of these transfusions, the hemophiliacs were among the first and most affected when the autoimmune deficiency syndrome entered the blood banks. AIDS is a bloodborne disease that from 1978 to 1986 infected about 20,000 Americans after they received contaminated blood transfusions. This new infection would change their lives forever. Ryan White, a teenager afflicted by hemophilia, received tainted blood and contracted the HIV virus. His subsequent expulsion from his school quickly made him a poster boy for AIDS and AIDS research. Other diseases such as syphilis, hepatitis, and malaria can be contracted through bad blood. However, science has caught up with these infections, and tests have been developed to screen for all known bloodborne disease. In addition to the logical fear of contracting illness through blood transfusion, superstitions concerning blood lasted long past their expiration date. Racial prejudices prevented many from getting the blood transfusions they needed because of the belief that there is an innate difference between the blood of the races. Blood means more than just the literal liquid in one's veins. Blood is where you come from, who you are. Therefore, the innovation of blood transfusions sparked controversy over the race of the donors. When African Americans were allowed to donate, blood banks segregated their supplies. However, as Sarah Chin says in her book, Technology and the Logic of American Racism, Once blood could be stored outside the body, examined microscopically, typed by elements rather than by racial categories, and transferred not just from one body to another, but from body to test tube and bottle to body, the conflation of racial and sanguineous purity could not be sustained. The discovery of type O, the universal donor type, shredded white supremacist fantasies about the literal entity of white blood. During World War II, the American policy of segregating blood was ignored by battlefield surgeons, whose only concern was to save their patients. However, the German Nazis maintained strict regulations regarding blood donations and transfusions. Any ethnic group deemed inferior were forbidden to donate blood to the German blood banks, and this restriction led to a severe shortage of blood for war victims. In modern times, this prejudice is mostly gone. Blood is now labeled by type and nothing else. Certain religious groups and individuals still refuse blood transfusions. Most prominent in this group are the Jehovah's Witnesses, who refuse any blood on religious and health grounds. They believe that accepting a blood transfusion is equivalent to ingesting blood for nourishment, an act forbidden by God in the Bible. Also, they refuse on the grounds that they can't be sure of the cleanliness of donated blood. Since the first human-to-human -human blood transfusion in 1818, the science behind the procedure has changed dramatically. Where once the donor had to be in the room for the blood to be transported between the bodies, now blood can be separated into plasma and kept in a blood bank for 10 years before use. Through experimentation with blood, many of the mysteries of the human body have been uncovered. War is one of the most deadly practices of the human race. Many soldiers died from blood loss before the innovation of blood transfusions. Now, surgeons can perform blood transfusions and replace the lost blood and save a life. Not only in war, through disorders, attacks, and childbirth, blood is lost. Blood is life, and without enough, people will die. Blood transfusions can change the outcome of a medical procedure from failed to successful. But despite the incredible positive impacts of a transfusion, there have been negative consequences to receiving blood. In the 1970s and 80s, thousands of people contracted AIDS through transfusions, and over the years, more have been affected by other blood-borne diseases. Racial prejudice has been perpetuated through arguments about black blood versus white blood or German versus non-German. Far from just a medical innovation, blood transfusions have rescued and changed the lives of millions of people throughout the course of the rocky history of the practice. Today, blood transfusions save lives and ruin very few, and giving blood is one of the safest things you can do to save a life. <laughs>